my name is Russell Perry. I'm the co-founder and CEO of a company, and I'm joining our, the co-founder and CTO, Peter Bainbridge Clayton today. And we're going to give you an insight on KYC on chain and how we, we can provide real-time KYB for BSV. And before we go into a deep dive here, let me tell you a little bit about who we are. We're a regulatory technology platform or regtech platform focusing on global business verification and KYC. And we've established a portfolio of services to be the first line of defense for anti-money laundering. I'm speaking to you today from company's headquarters here in Vienna, Austria, where we were also founded back in 2012. In the meantime, we've grown to about 50 team members across the globe with offices in Vienna, in, in, Vienna, in uh, Singapore, London, and, and New York. And the company platform is, is on top of a global network. So we have uh, set up a global network connecting to primary source uh, company data. And the primary sources are registers, commercial registers, financial authorities, and tax authorities. And that means that we're able to provide real-time access and verification across more than 200 countries and jurisdictions and covering more than 110 million companies. And let me tell you a little bit more what we do. So we we'll talk about audit proof data. And audit proof company data has to fulfill three checks. It has to come from a primary source, it has to be time stamped, and the data has to be a true copy to the regulated platform or to the regulated uh, banking uh, platform. And with this instant access of more than 200 uh, jurisdictions worldwide, and the real-time setup, we can ensure that audit-proof company data is used when onboarding corporate clients, B2B clients, institutional clients, correspondent banks, for example, and we are not a database. We're not a static database. We operate a real-time network. And that, of course, fits really, really well into cross-border payment and blockchain networks. And, of course, the question is, why do we actually do it? Well, it's all about regulation. There's new regulation in the European Union, just recently in the United States, but also in other economic centers around the world. And the burden of proof on companies is increasing. The burden of proof to verify with legitimate uh, information and with the company information with a high veracity is growing. And at just a few years ago, it was okay to check who you're dealing with, who your clients were, you know, every one, every two years, et cetera. But this is really moving into real time. It's moving into perpetual KYB or business KYC. So when there is a change to the to your, uh, status of your clients, be it an address change, be it managing directors, the people behind, if you're a regulated platform or a regulated entity, you have to know. And meaning you have to know also means, is the data that you're using also trustworthy? And it has to come from a reliable independent source that is part of the fourth anti-money laundering directive, the European Union. In the meantime, in January of this year, we've already progressed very quickly to the fifth anti-money laundering directive. And this also requires that the data source has to be recognized by national authorities. And going beyond that, we, the sixth anti-money laundering directive in the European Union is just around the corner in this, uh, December 2020. And following the European lead on anti-money laundering are the United States and other economic uh, centers around the world. And when we talk about KYC on-chain, we're also talking about how can we bridge the gap of the manual processes, the back office processes that are done in the, in the back uh, office by teams who are specialized but there's no connection to the transaction itself. And um, I would like to give you a, just a quick overview of some of the acronyms and, and the definitions. When we talk about AML, it's anti-money laundering, right? When we talk about audit-proof data, uh, we're talking about data with a high veracity and legitimate source. And KYB is KYC, which you know uh, when individuals have to provide passport or verification information. But KYB is all about the businesses and the entities and the people behind. Without further ado, I would like to hand over to Pete 
to give you an insight on uh, real-time KYB on BSV. Pete, all yours. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, CoinGeek. And thank you to the guys and girls here in London. Um, it is fantastic to be here. I get the interesting part of this, which is telling you what we're actually going to be doing with BSV. So our product is called KYC OnChain. The clue is pretty much in the name as to what kind of thing it involves. But let me, before I tell you about it, I'm going to tell you what it isn't. Um, to do this sort of thing that we're talking about, these AML checks, these KYC checks, there's a few ways of doing it. And in the old world, you might say, ask the client for information. Few problems with that. The client might not know what you want. You'd be amazed how many people running a business don't even know their registration number. Um, the client might not have everything to hand, so you have to then wait while they get to it. And most importantly, probably, it's a dirty secret that money launderers don't generally tend to be that honest. So they're probably going to lie to you. OK, so you can go to someone like a credit reference agency. OK, fine, great. They have lots of information. It's all good. They've done some background checks. Problem is, it doesn't meet the regulations. Because you don't know when this information was gathered, you don't know where it came from originally, you don't know what they've done with it, it doesn't actually fit the bill. So, other thing, you basically, you can go to the registers themselves. You say, okay, I'll go over here, I'll pull information direct from source. Fantastic, no problem. And if you're in the UK, probably the easiest thing in the world. What happens when you need to do this check for someone in Germany? Or someone in the Netherlands, or someone in India, or someone wherever you like? Um, it's going to be tricky. Do you speak the language? Do you have an account with them? Are you set up to do this? Chances are probably not. This is what we do, and this is why Russell made the point about it being a network. But regardless of us, what you end up with, if you've done these things, you've asked a client, you've asked a CRA, you've gone to the register, you end up with information which is already out of date because this whole thing is taking you a long time. It's probably not actually going to be suitable to fulfill the legal requirements, but you won't even realize this. And one thing's for sure, if you're trying to do real-time stuff, forget it. It's just a total non-starter. So, what is KYC on-chain? We know what it isn't. What is it? I like to use an acronym COPPER. Actually, it's a mnemonic, COPPER, which basically sets what needs to be done to meet these requirements in a way that you are not going to get fined by regulators. And don't forget, this isn't just about regulated industries. There are industries which have to do some of these regulations without having to do the full ones that are just normal, everyday businesses, and that's based on a fiscal level. First one, content. Okay. The content that you're using to do the check has to be valid for the check. Now, that sounds totally obvious, but if you're using a register to get information on a company, you have to know what that information needs to do. Having accounts for a, for a 20 year old company when you're trying to find out who the ultimate shareholders are probably isn't going to work. You don't want to do that. Content matters. Second one, provenance. And Russell alluded to this. The data and the documents you use must, must be traceable to a primary government source. There's just no question over this. It's clearly stated, the provenance matters. Now, interestingly, what we've already built with our network of connections to registers covers those two. We can get you the right data, the right documents, even if you don't really know what you need, and we can prove that it came from a government golden source. Third one, proof. The regulations are actually quite odd. They don't just say you must do these checks. They actually say you must be able to prove that you did these checks. Now, proof is a tricky concept. It's actually quite easy to come up with something which looks like proof but actually isn't. Now, we're all sat here, we're all here because of blockchain. What are blockchains good at? Blockchains are good at proof. 
That's what they do. That's their thing. But we'll come back to that. Event, the next one. You have to be able to prove, proof again, when these checks happened, when they started, when they finished, because that determines how fresh information is, and that determines your GRC model, and that determines whether or not you're in trouble with some kind of regulator. Event is important. Now, Jimmy and Craig have been talking about timestamps quite a lot. Um, so obviously, this, for us, this is a crucial thing as well. And the last one, real time. Any system which this is used for has to be usable in real time. You have to be able to do these checks, and by real time, I'm talking about within seconds, if not within milliseconds. You have to be able to do these checks in real time. If you can't do them in real time, it's not going to help. Your transactions aren't going to flow. Your customer is going to go somewhere else who's got better IT that can do these things in real time. It's got to be done. So, copper. Now, I've already said the first two parts we cover. We cover content, we cover provenance. Third part is proof. As I said, blockchains are really good at proof. That's, that's their thing. But how do we use that level of proof that's inherent in a blockchain in what we do? Relatively simple. So, on this circle, imagine you're using our API. Lots of people do, it's jolly good, you should check it out. They come to us, they send us an API request that has some kind of metadata about it. It basically says, I want this information for this person, so this business. We can take that metadata, we can either hash it or we can encrypt it. We then talk to the source for us, which in this case is a register, and this is the commercial register appropriate to the jurisdiction of the company you are checking. We get a reply from them. We then hash or encrypt that reply. We build a structure from these. We hash or encrypt the structure. I know this sounds like a lot of hashing. We then plunk that onto BSV. And then we send our reply back to the client. What this has done is it's absolutely guaranteed that what the, our customer claims, if they get asked by any kind of regulator or any kind of law enforcement, it absolutely guarantees that what they asked for is what they asked for. What we told them is what we told them. You, you cannot argue with this. Um, the interesting point here, and this is why BSV is very, uh, very good for us, is that an API is meant to be very fast. So it's no use having an API request come to us and then five minutes later we send them back some data because we're waiting for a blockchain update. Now interestingly, our original model for this was using Ethereum. Um, and I'll wash my mouth later, sorry, apologies. The, what we had to do was we actually had to queue up all these requests. We built a Merkle tree of these JSON structures, and then every two minutes we flushed the tree to the blockchain because Ethereum could not keep up with our API. Technically, this was perfectly fine, of course. Great. The problem is that take up of that will be absolutely zero because no customer is going to want to come back to us two minutes or 10 minutes or two days or whenever later to basically say, oh, you gave me a reference for a request. Now I'm going to hand that back to you so that you can give me the actual proof so I can use your system to prove that what I say happened. Take up would be zero. It's no use. It has to be real time. The API has to be real time, which means that our underlying blockchain infrastructure has to be real time. BSV does this. OK, so that's proof. We've now got a point where we can prove what people asked us and what we gave back to them. Great. Next one is event. Now, how do we get the event? Now, event basically means we're talking about timestamps. You've spent three days listening to uh, Jimmy and Craig talking about timestamps far more eloquently than I shall. Um, but suffice to say, if we use BSV, we natively get timestamp information that is trustworthy. Um, if we're not using BSV, we can still do it. We have to use 
certified timestamps from a certified timestamp provider with all the, uh, all the potential problems that Craig was outlining not very long ago, but it's still doable. And one thing in their defense is that those timestamps are court admissible, at least in the EU. However, if the BSV timestamps can be part of consensus mechanism, immune to 51% attacks in the vaguest sense of the word, and ideally if they could be admissible in court, then they would do perfectly well. Um, so, we now know what's happened, we now know what was requested, we now know what was responded, we now know when all this happened. The last part is real time. Now, in order for this to be real time, we need to do one more thing. And this one more thing is the second layer of this whole program. So KYC on chain is a multi-layer system. What I've just described is the first layer, which is basically recording transactions in a provable fashion on a blockchain, BSV in this case. The second layer expands that level of proof to actually moving the API itself into the chain. So we've gone from using into BSV, putting data in there, to actually using onto BSV. This is important because it means that the actual request is now recorded in as exact and trustable a fashion as the processing of the request. This is my, I liken this to my onion skin diagram. Um, the, the thing to bear in mind here is that without systems like ours, without systems like BSV which can handle proof, the whole idea of these KYC checks, these AML checks is entirely based on trust. In the middle, we have a company. They're giving information to register. They do their, they file their accounts, they file their annual returns, all good. Beyond that is us. We take the information from the register to give to our customers. And the regulators of those customers, or whoever that may be, the law enforcement people, they trust the customer that they're not lying to them. So each of this is based on trust. Every single chain there is based on trust. But there's a problem, of course. Trust is not truth. Trust is a measure of how much risk you are willing to accept that what you are being told is the truth. That's a very different thing. Um, please don't go home to your spouses or boyfriends, girlfriends, significant others, and when they say, do you trust me, say, well, trust isn't true because that will end well and I don't want to be responsible for it. Just don't do that. So what do we do? By using BSV, we've basically turned some of this trust, this layered trust model into a layered truth model. Truth is good, trust is fine, truth is much, much better. So, we've actually made it so that on the outer layers of this, every involved party can be sure that what's being claimed is true, demonstrably true. What we're also working with is to actually extend this inwards we would like the registers and the regulators to actually join in with this model. We see the whole of this system, KYC on-chain, as an infrastructure system, including BSV. Now, if the regulators are on board with this and the registers themselves are on board with this, there's no reason why agents such as notaries or accountants shouldn't be on board with this. So what we're doing is turning more and more of these layers green so that it literally becomes a matter of fact that this was said at this point, and there we go, it's truth. That's quite a big deal because it means, if you imagine you're a regulator, to, in order to check whether um, someone like a bank or a, an exchange is, is actually doing what they claim, you have to do a lot of digging. You have to ask them for files, you have to ask them for documentation, you have to ask them for all of this stuff. And, you know, smart people can make these things up. It's not that difficult, let's, let's face it. In this model, you don't even have to ask. You can just look. You can look on the blockchain and there's all the proof you will ever need. Okay, so. By putting all those bits and pieces together, we've created 
something really, really, really powerful and something unique, we believe. We've created an infrastructure where a company with BSV can immutably record real-time transactions from primary source, time-stamped and demonstrably true. This, this basically means that meeting those requirements becomes trivial. And this is the important thing. You don't need to be a regulated industry to benefit from this. If anyone can find an example of regulation actually being reduced, I'd love to see it, but I, I'm not sure they any, any exist. More and more regulation is coming, and it's going to get tighter and tighter. This system meets every known regulation that we are aware of and that we believe is coming. And we, we talk to these people that make these laws. Large industrials need this because they are subject to VAT checks over a certain amount. So why not use this, get regulated industry compliant, grade compliance, even though you're not a regulated industry? You'd be crazy not to. So, what? That's all great. And we've made the banks happy. We've made the regulators happy. We've made uh, large industrials happy. They're, they're not going to go to jail. They're not going to get fined. And these fines are gigantic. I'll point that out. But we've done something else. We've done something quite subtle. We've tokenized KYC. We've not only tokenized the KYC information, we've actually tokenized the entire process of it. What does that mean? If I buy a KYC service through this platform from company, I then own it. It's there on the chain. I can unlock it. Um, but hell, there's a native token on this chain. Why can't I sell it? Why can't I get some of my money back? Or even better, why can't I sell little bits of it? Perfect. What we've done is a marketplace. Marketplace needs a few things. It needs tokenization. It needs some kind of currency. Um, and that's literally it. It's good capitalism. This has actually created such a thing. We have created a marketplace based on BSV where KYC information can be traded. Um, and we don't want just us to be part of this infrastructure. We would like CRAs to come in and say, OK, here's a six-month-old credit rating for this company. If you want a new one, pay a bit more. Fine. We don't care who joins in. The more, the merrier. Um, and this is actually our end goal. This is where we want to be. This is where we see the most value in doing this kind of thing. We want to be at a point where people can do provable, demonstrable, auditable checks in real time and then potentially sell this same information or just transfer this same information. And that last point is vital because if you're doing money transfers, say, using a network, you need to be able to... The problem right now is that the sending party and the receiving party have to do the same checks. And they don't have the same information. They may not have the same sources. That's insane. This is why people wait weeks and weeks for money to hit their account, because it's stuck doing KYC again when actually it's already been done. Why would you do that? Do it once, share it. Or even sell it if you want. Doesn't matter. Just transfer it somehow. Then everyone's happy. The users are happy, they get their money very quickly, and everyone's happy. There is the, um, I forget the name of it, there's the money transfer regulation thing, it's totally gone. But this basically would fulfill that requirement, at least as a starting point. Um, and that's it. I hope you are as excited as I probably sound about this. Um, but that's all I have to offer you for now. If there are any questions from anyone in the virtual space, I'd love to hear them.
Thank you very much. That's Russell Perry and Peter Bainbridge Clayton. Um, so I do have a question for you, Pete, which is, can you give our audience an idea of the timeline for which your company is expecting completion and rollout of these different phases of your BSV journey, which are all very exciting? Thank you, Jimmy. Um, yeah, I've got to be careful. Every time I give a timeline and I get back to the office, I literally get my head kicked in by the planners and the project managers and the developers. Um, no, we, so we're in discussion with a, a well-known BSV partner whose name starts in N and ends in N. Um, and and the, the plan is to do the very first part of this by the, uh, the end of the year. And that shouldn't be difficult. We see no issue there because, as I say, most of this already exists. We did it on Ethereum before, uh, and we, we also did it on Hyperledger. So there'll be a few you know, a few changes. That was all smart contract driven. This, in this case, it wouldn't be just yet. Um, but we're, we're hoping to do that by the end of the year. Phase two, where the whole thing is smart contract driven, um, we need to find a good engine on BSV for that. I know there are quite a few uh, options. We think we'll be spoiled for choice. Uh, but anyone watching who wants to proffer their services in that, in that scope, please do get in touch. Now, before the purists attack me, I'm well aware that BSV has um, smart contract capabilities, but the honest truth is that I don't believe they are as capable as, say, the Ethereum smart contract model. But hopefully by, say, um, mid next year, I, I'm, I'm just wondering if Russell's cringing here, but I'll, I'll say mid next year, um, and we should have, I believe that we'll have the fully on-chain smart contract based model running and then ideally we want to organically grow the marketplace. That's something which will, we can't force, we can sort of, we can foster, we can create the environment for it, but actually to have people using it will, will take longer and that'll be a, an adoption process, I believe. Russell did not cringe, so that's good. And <laughs> let me ask this question to Russell before we close the session. I'm really fascinated by the idea of tokenizing KYC information and creating the marketplace that uh, Pete described. Can you tell us your vision of how that will change the industry for KYC and KYB and who might be the potential customers for that kind of tokenized KYC information? Well, looking not only in the future, but what we're seeing today already is that when it comes to cross-border uh, transfer, right, money transfer. There's this big gap, as Pete also pointed out, that everything that is done uh, now on the verification side, the identity verification, entity verification, and the money laundering side is not only off chain, it's actually manual, siloed, right? And uh, the, the benefits really are about efficiency gains by ensuring that A and B, as Pete said, have the same uh, type of information and regulatory approval is embedded into the transaction. That's really where we want to go. And uh, if we look at uh, the uh, potential clients, of course, it's financial institutions, it's uh, remittance uh, companies, it's digital uh, asset platforms that have regulatory requirements that need to fulfill and would like to not only find an efficiency gain, but it's also about uh, filling the gap, the regulatory, the compliance gap by having a break through the manual process. And um, I think uh, the regulated industry, you know, be it financial institutions, insurers, real estate companies, digital exchanges, now also art dealers, uh, at least in the European Union, is one part of the industry. But if we're able to also extend that beyond, and we're, we see that today already by supply chain networks, they're not only looking at the resilience, but they're trying to find out who are they dealing with? Is there a cluster risk? How do we find that out? Oh, it's the shareholders behind it. We need to analyze that and provide a, a proof that we've actually created uh, the, the verification and all the documentation. So it will transform not just the regulated industry, it will transform cross-border trade as we know it today by adding the, the uh, entity and the identity of the different players, the A's and the B's and, the, and all of the uh, customers and their suppliers within the entire global uh, supply chain. 
Russell, it's really wonderful to welcome a company of your caliber and a team of your caliber to the Bitcoin SV world. As we wrap up, could you just give our audience an idea of the uh, caliber of investors and business partners that your company has? Yeah, uh, happy to do that. So, uh, you know, we were founded back in 2012. Uh, the founders uh, also seeded the company and a lot of uh, business angels have also supported us as we built out the infrastructure part of our industry the past five years. And most recently, uh, Global Brains joined us. That's the CVC, Japanese CVC and also Fairway uh, Global uh, joined us uh, as a private equity firm to help us advance the rollout of our technology. But also uh, we set up our new shop uh, in, in our office in, in New York in order to also address the U.S. market. And this is where we are, we've brought on uh, some really, really great um, investors who have the global view and also understand that technology itself will not only drive the innovation, but we will have efficiency gains across all different segments. Well, thank you very much. That's Russell Perry, the CEO, and Peter Bainbridge Clinton, the CTO of Company with a K. I encourage everybody to check them out and see what they're going to be doing to advance our vision of one world, one chain. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank you. Build your future on BSV with TAL, a world-class blockchain infrastructure and service provider helping companies to build applications and services on the Bitcoin SV network. Led by industry experts, built on a solid foundation for sustainable business growth. Direct transaction submission, fee transparency at standard and volume rates. Regulated and publicly traded, TAL brings an unparalleled level of compliance and regulatory standard that private processors and operators can't offer. Build a business today that will succeed tomorrow with TAL. Discover more about TAL today at TAAL.com.